So way on, the, on this debate we're seeing with the economists, where do you think inflation is, and perhaps as important, where do you think it's going this year? So first, like many economists, I think part of what we've seen will be temporary, transitory. If you think back to the panic about lumber prices, where they shot up, and then the supply responded, the lumber prices came back down. I think what we're part of what we're seeing are a series of events like that as supply chains get back coordinated. And so I, I think that this is not a sign of a permanent increase. And, and I don't think we're seeing a permanent increase in expectations of inflation at this level. Uh, the, the other thing is, is that I think we have to bear in mind the relative costs. The, the costs of inflation are real, and we want to avoid it, and we want to keep those from growing ever higher. But the cost of having too few people employed, the cost of lost opportunity, lost jobs, is very real as well. So we need to be thinking about how do we bring down inflation and control it, but at the same time, keep momentum going in the labor market. So I want to ask about that trade-off, but before that, Dr. Romer, uh, is it in fact the case that too few people are employed? I mean, obviously, we'd always like everyone to be employed, but as I say, things like quits rates are at record high levels. I mean, we're down under 4% unemployment now. Yeah, so, you know, if you look over the last 20 years or, or, or so, uh, 20, 30 years, what we've seen is lots of people have just given up uh, having a job. Around well, around like four and a half percent of males of working age, uh, adult age, 25 to 54, about four and a half percent of them have just left uh, the labor market. They've left, they've given up trying to have a job. So the, the fundamental problem is that for these people, working is not attractive enough. We, we've had these debates over time about, well, are real wages really going up or not? You know, well, the, the wages may not have gone up that much, but we can get Christmas tree lights cheaper at, at, you know, because we import them from China. And so maybe it's okay to be a worker. But if you just step back from that debate and look at this fact that people are giving up on work in a nation that prided itself on the, the work ethic, this is a sign that something's wrong with the opportunities we're presenting to people in the labor market. And, and, and Paul, some of the interesting work you've done is comparative, comparing us with other countries, such as Germany and Sweden, the United Kingdom, and showing that the pattern is not the same. So it's not simply a matter of, for example, technology. Right, right. And, and I think actually the, the clearest comparison is with Canada, because Canada is so similar in so many other ways and so, so close to us in the United States. And um, uh, Canada has uh, continued to put more people to work. Uh, substantially more women are at work in, in, in Canada than in the United States. Um, the trend on men has been kind of roughly constant uh, with some fluctuations, whereas in the United States, it's been this kind of inexorable trend downwards. So we need to think hard about what is it that the Canadians are doing and how can we as a nation go in that direction at the same time that we encourage the Federal Reserve to do what it needs to do, which will be to raise interest rates to bring uh, inflation down. Well, well let's, uh, taking your analysis as you gave it as the truth, is monetary policy the way to address that, the best way, even an effective way to address that? Because lower interest rates don't necessarily bring back those prime age men from the Midwest. I, I think we should think of interest rates and the Fed's control over interest rates as being our primary tool for controlling inflation. So uh, following something like an interest rate rule, and one of the basics of this rule is that if inflation is higher, interest rates need to be higher so that the real cost of borrowing stays about the same. So we should be expecting uh, increases in interest rates. Maybe they'll be transitory if the inflation is transitory, but but that, that needs to happen. But I agree that... Um, Keeping interest rates low um, as a way to put more people to work is not a good idea. What we should be doing is simultaneously implementing fiscal measures that could put more people to work at the same time that we're encouraging the Fed to raise interest rates and uh, use that to slow down you know, other, other parts of the economy. But I, I would also be clear that we don't need to think about 
forcing like the person who just got a job as a gas station attendant, you know, somebody who's been on Oxycontin and has gotten clean and has gotten a job as an, a gas station attendant. We don't need to force that person out of that job or deprive that person of that kind of job to bring inflation down. We want to keep those people moving into jobs and we want to find, uh, you know, use interest rates to slow down other parts of the economy. I want to explore those fiscal alternatives that you mentioned, but before that, we do have a question from a viewer right now asking, is it possible that some of what we're seeing with labor force participation is actually a result of COVID? That is to say, we hear people saying, I'm going to retire earlier, or I'm going to work, work, to, work to live rather than live to work. Yeah, um, I, I think there's a lot we don't know about what's going on right now. I, one element could be the stress that parents are feeling because their kids can't be in school because of, of COVID. So that will be a temporary thing once we get past uh, uh, COVID. But, but this trend towards men, it's especially men and especially young men, to just de uh, disengage from uh, the, the world of work. This trend has been going on for 20 or 30 years. So there's something beyond COVID at work here. And it's something that we, we need to, you know, as a society, Con confront. Uh, you know, there, there's even some speculation. Some economists have talked about the role of, of video games. Like, what are these people doing if they're not in school and they're not working? Maybe they're living at home and playing video games. Do we want to live in a society where that's an accepted path for an adult to pursue? Yeah, I, I suspect not. Let's come back to your fiscal alternatives that are intriguing. If you were going to use a fiscal device in order to get people back into the workforce rather than monetary, what would it look like? Yeah, so I think one thing that we could use quickly when we need to stimulate the economy are cuts in payroll taxes, perhaps even subsidies to, to work during a, a deep downturn. This is something that Singapore used uh, in the wake of the financial crisis, and it seems to have been very effective there. Now, they start from very high payroll taxes and required savings contributions, so they had a lot of room to cut. But we could make it more lucrative for firms to hire and for people to work uh, in, a, in a downturn and then offset that with either some other taxes or payroll taxes that go back to more normal levels during uh, normal times. So that would be one way to go. But, but go back into the history of, say, the Great Depression. We used a program called the Civilian Conservation Corps to get, uh, it was mainly men at the time, again, but it was young men who were just uh, kind of lost in their lives. Civilian Conservation Corps put them in camps, gave them discipline, made sure that they had to get up every day and make their bed and go out and work in the, the forests. And if that's what we need to do to help some people get on track, let's do the spending to do that as well. Okay, one final one here, if I could, Dr. Romer. Uh, what about attaching strings to some of these fiscal benefits? We see this, particularly some of the Republicans on Capitol Hill saying, fine, let's do that, give them a support, really give them support, but condition on their going to work or going to work training programs. Well, I, I think this is uh, realistically where there's room for uh, a, a meeting of the, 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 the minds from both the left and the right. I think on the left, the concern is more, let's help people out. They're a little more inclined to say, just give them money. On the right, there is, uh, I think, a stronger insistence on this idea that work is not just good for the nation, but it's good for people as well. And if we could agree on the left and the right that making sure people have the opportunity to work, that it's lucrative to work, and insisting that everybody can make a contribution and should make a contribution. I think that's the kind of measures we could agree on as a pretty divided society right now as a way to address the inequality that uh, continues to, to get worse.